Looking for a reliable VPN? Securely access apps, websites, entertainment, and more with NordVPN. With over 5,100 servers worldwide, all your data stays safe behind a wall of next-generation encryption. Work, browse, or use social media platforms safely. All at a price you can afford. Get NordVPN today. Today's episode is called, How to Arrange a Marriage. Bobby Joe nearly ruins Billy Joe's new romance with her none-too-subtle marriage hints. New boyfriend Jerry is played by Meredith McRae's real-life husband Greg Mulavey. Meredith McRae sings, I'm glad there is you. Original air date, January 3, 1970. Come ride the little train that is rolling down the tracks to the junction. Forget about your cares, it is time to relax at the junction. Lots of curves, you bet, and even more when you get to the junction. Eddie, come to the junction. There's a little hotel called the Shady Rest at the junction. It is run by Joe, come and be his guest at the junction. Here's our lady MB, she's as pretty as can be at the junction. Petticoat Junction. terrific number for when they arrive. When who arrives? Billy Joe and the fellow she's bringing home. You know why she's bringing them home, don't you? No, why? So he can look us over before he pops the question. <laughs> oh, now wait a minute, Bobby Joe. What gives you the idea that she has any such thing as marriage in mind? Well, she's bringing them home, isn't she? She's never done that before. Oh, Bobby Joe, Billy Joe brings home lots of young men. Not for a long time. Well, no, not since last weekend. <laughs> oh. Well, this one is different. How do you know? I just know. I was the one that talked to her on the telephone at Drucker's, remember? It was just one little thing she said that tipped me off. Well, what was the one little thing that she said? I think I'm in love. <laughs> what? That's what Billy Joe said on the telephone. It, it tipped her off that Billy Joe might be serious. <laughs> well, why didn't you tell us before? I didn't want you jumping to conclusions. <laughs> Hi, Pumpkin. Um, Have a cookie. Uh, Uncle Joe, you'll spoil her. Oh, don't be silly. It's good for her to learn the finer things of life. <laughs> like eating snacks between meals. Between meals? He eats snacks between snacks. I'm just trying to keep up my constitution. Where's my pillow? Bobby Joe took it. Bobby Joe, what'd you do with my pillow? The one with the picture of Mount Fuji Am on it. I put it in the basement so Billy Joe's new boyfriend wouldn't see it. What is he, a kleptomaniac? No, he's a very artistic person. And that pillow's ugly. It is not. It's a thing of beauty. It's one of the few cherished memories I have of the Seattle World's Fair. Uncle Joe, you never went to the Seattle World's Fair. That's why I have such few memories. Okay. Anyway, I'll leave it to Janet. Isn't that a beautiful pillow? Uh, yeah. I'll leave it to Steve. Uh, I'm with Janet. Eddie Joe? Mm -mm. Oh, forget it. <laughs> Oh, Uncle Joe, if Billy Joe really is serious about this boy and wants to make an impression, we should do everything we can to measure up. We have to prove ourselves to him? That's right. And Uncle Joe, 
I think it would be nice if you got dressed up and went to Drucker's store to meet them when they arrive. Dressed up? Right. Oh, please, Uncle Joe. You look so good in your best suit. Why, you could make everybody think you're a gentleman. <laughs> to be on our best behavior for this yahoo. But I don't think there's anything wrong with that, Joe. It's done all the time. It's done all the time. You're not the one that's wearing the starch collar to meet this bum. <laughs> He's not a bum. How do you know? You've never even met him. Well, I know Billy Joe. You don't think she'd take up with anybody but a fine young man. Well... I'll bet he's an outstanding fellow. Well-educated, well-to-do, fine family. Hey, you think he could be? I mean, well-to-do. Oh, boy. Joe, your standards never get above the money belt, do they? <laughs> you know, when you said you lived out in the country, you weren't fooling, were you? We are pretty rural, I guess. Oh, don't get me wrong. I love it. It's so nice and peaceful. Yeah, wait till you meet the people. They're just the salt of the earth. Say, you know, Sam, it might just be a nice gesture when this guy comes to give him a little something. Sort of a welcoming present. You know what I mean? Yeah, I know what you mean. What do you have in mind? What do you got? <laughs> that doesn't. I knew sure as shooting you'd ask me to come up with whatever it is free of charge. Oh, come on, Sam. It don't have to be much. Say, uh, a bag of pears. No. Okay, a few cigars. No. Well, how about... No. <laughs> Sam, we've been friends for a long time. I'd like to ask you something personal. Yeah? Why are you so cheap? <laughs> you know, it's kind of hard to explain the difference between Hooterville people and anyone else. I mean, they're just normal, average, wonderful people. You kind of love them, don't you? Yeah, I do. Well, come to think of it, that's the main thing about Hooterville. Everybody loves one another. It's kind of idyllic that way. Sounds great. Is great. Tell you, Sam Drucker, this is it. I've had it. I'll never set foot to your crummy store again as long as I live. Good. If I don't see you again in a hundred years, it'll seem like the pause at refreshing. <laughs> ah, ah, Are those two from Hooterville? Huh? Oh, that's my Uncle Joe and his best friend, Sam Drucker. <laughs> Love. Here to go Junction will return after these messages. Joe Mannix is a private investigator. He's not a cop. I'm Joe Mannix. I'm not a cop. Joe Mannix drives a cool green convertible. Says 99% fat free. But inside, I bite into a York peppermint. And now, back to Petticoat Junction. Hey, look what I found. Champagne. A wine salesman from Dubuque left it here a long time ago. He said it would keep. Oh, well, apparently it did. <laughs> what are you going to do with it? Well, I thought it would be a good idea to open it and be drinking it when Billy Joe and her boyfriend get here. What for? To show we're sophisticated, like in the city. <laughs> well, I doubt that even in the city, people sit around in the middle of the day sipping champagne for no particular reason. Um, well, maybe we can think of a good reason. We could celebrate your anniversary. What for? She wants us all to be sitting around sipping champagne when Billy Joe arrives with her new boyfriend. Oh, yeah? Uh, out of a slipper? Hey. Forget it. But it might impress him. And besides, if he sees the example of you two still happily celebrating your years of marriage... What years of marriage? It might give him an idea. Yeah, an idea that we started around the age of 11. <laughs> Gee. Bobby Joe, and not that your idea isn't a brilliant one, but there's one tiny little flaw. This isn't our anniversary. <laughs> it's got to be the anniversary of something. <laughs> when you first met. Your first date. Your first kiss. When you first proposed. Oh, who remembers those dates? Yeah, who could... Re you don't remember the day you proposed to me? But why should I? I mean, what difference does it make what day it was? What difference does it make? It just happened to be the turning point of our lives. Or was it just another day to you? Are you kidding? Huh. 
It's not every day a guy decides to give up his freedom. Steve Kelly. Oh, honey, come on. Oh, my gosh, they're here. Oh, quick, you two, get lobby dubby <laughs> Honey, I didn't mean anything, but will you just let me explain? Just don't talk to me. Okay. Oh, so you can explain. <laughs> Look, at least kind of stay out of sight, will you? <laughs> Atta boy. At least we'll give him a friendly welcome. Come on. And I know you're going to love it. Oh, here's my sister, Bobby Jo. And this is our family dog. Hi. <laughs> dog, you're supposed to welcome him. Yeah. I'm sorry. Take it. Hey. You know, dogs usually like me. Oh, it must be that stray cat I picked up. He smells it. Oh, sure. That explains it. Hey, where's Uncle Joe? He's supposed to meet you at Drucker's. Oh, I know. Uh, well, he and Mr. Drucker were having a... A, a sort of a love-in. <laughs> well, they don't mean anything by it. They're really very fond of each other. Well, come on in. I want you to meet my other sister and her husband. Talk about an ideal couple. Right, Bobby Joe? Uh, uh, right. Um, why don't we go in the back way? <laughs> no. Why? Well, uh, so he can get to know the place. And, uh... Uh, if there's an earthquake or an explosion during the night, he'll know how to get out. Well, you sure know how to welcome a person. <laughs> we are going in the front. Come on, Jerry. What is the matter with you? Uh, Steve and Betty Jo are in there having a fight. Who needs that? Uh, right. Hey, what do you think of him? <laughs> Thanks a lot. Oh, hi. Uh, well, we're the Elliots. I'm uh, uh, Steve, and this is Betty Jo. Hi. Hi, hi. Jerry Roberts. Glad to know you. Hi. hi. <laughs> uh, we're just about to celebrate our two and a half year anniversary. As soon as this gets chilled, oh, why don't you join us? Oh, thank you. Thank you. Your two and a half year anniversary? You even celebrate half years? Yeah, well, uh, when you're in love. <laughs> I thought you said they were fighting. Married couples. You can't trust them. <laughs> we're going to Jeep. How come you've got Uncle Joe with you? Oh, I picked him up on the old back fire road. He and Sam Drucker had a beef, and your uncle stamped off and missed a cannonball. That's right. Blab everything. <laughs> Come on in, Orn. I want you to meet Billy Joe's new boyfriend. Oh, no, no, golly, I, I don't think I should. I, I just got a report about two fishermen who have exceeded the limit over on Willow Lake, and I was going to follow up on that. Oh, that can wait. Oh, no, 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 it can't. I'm on duty. See, I got my gun, and I got the badge. I got nothing. I know, but this is much more important. You and I are going to help Billy Joe track this fellow. Billy Joe needs help? Boy, I don't understand that. I mean, Billy Joe's got... Well, what, what I mean is that, uh, you know, when it comes to a girl who looks and uh, who's... Oh, boy. Well, what I'm trying to say is she's, she's loaded. Oh, you've noticed. Well, well I, all I meant, Bobby Joe, was that if, I mean, you know, if Billy Joe's out to trap someone, she doesn't need me for bait. <laughs> Orin, all I want to do is show Billy Joe's boyfriend a truly happy couple. Oh, who's that? You and me. Oh. And seeing you and me together might give him ideas. Well, it better not. I saw you first. <laughs> Come on. Tell us about yourself, young man. What do you do? Do? Well, Uncle Joe, I already told you. Jerry's a musician. That's how we met. Yeah, I know. What do you do for a living? <laughs> well, that's it. I play guitar. No kidding. What do you mean, Joe? Well, look at me. I'm a leader of the volunteer fire department band, but I don't try to make a living out of it. Well, what do you do, sir, for a living, I mean? Oh, well, uh, well, I, uh, then I, uh, things like that. Let's see. Uh, Jerry was going to be an architect until he discovered music. Oh, really? Uh, where did you study? MIT. Hey, that's a great school. Not much on the football field, but... Big in the brain department. That's another reason I turned to music. <laughs> Here you go. Thank you. But say, Thank you. as long as you're interested in architecture, you should see Steve and Betty Jo's honeymoon cottage. How did that come in? 
Well, I think it's a perfectly adorable little house, and he should see it. <laughs> I'd like to. Swell. We'll go right over as soon as we toast Steve and Betty Jo. Betty Jo. <laughs> There you go, Janet. There's a little bit left. Oh, I don't know. It's my night to do the dishes. I don't want to drop any. <laughs> What's the matter? Are you afraid of drunk drying? Oh. <laughs> I want to make a toast. Here's to that lovely little lady that two and a half years ago finally made me say, I do. And he's been doing it ever since. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> to that lovely little lady whom I chased after until she caught me. <laughs> and may the years bring much happiness and joy. Uh, sweetheart, why don't, why don't you raise your glass? Steve. <laughs> What's that you chased after me until I caught you? Oh, honey, I was only... Well, you make it sound as if I did the proposing. No, 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 no. It's just something that guys say. Oh, they do, huh? Yeah, like the guy said... Uh, Listen, I wouldn't say that she was hard up for her husband, but the marriage license read to whom it may concern. Betty <laughs> <laughs> uh, Joe? Sweetheart? Darling? <laughs> well, so much for toasting. On to the honeymoon cottage. <laughs> Everything to me. Bobby Joe, I prefer. Before you leave here, he'll be setting the date. <laughs> there he is. How do you like it? Well, it's a very nice house. Oh, it's more than a nice house. It's a shrine. A shrine? It's the very first house Steve and Betty Joe lived in after they got married. Oh, how about that? First they got married, and then they lived here. In that order. <laughs> Um, would you like to go inside, Jerry? Sure, why not? This is the very step where they used to sit with their arms around each other in the evening and look up into the stars and count their blessings. <laughs> right, Orn? Hmm? Oh, count the blessings, yeah. They, they were loaded with blessings. It's still furnished. Come on. Yes, they couldn't bear to move anything out and spoil their little love nest. Could they, Orin? No, 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 they couldn't, couldn't bear that. <laughs> they wanted to keep it just exactly the same way for the next happy couple that moved in. Preferably somebody in the family. <laughs> <laughs> and this is the chair that uh, Steve used to sit in after a hard day's work, and his loving wife would bring him his slippers and caress his brow. <laughs> Uh, come on into the kitchen, Jerry. Isn't it cute? Yeah, I'm not much of an authority on kitchens, but it looks fine to me. <laughs> and this is where Betty Jo, the lovely little bride, would prepare all those delicious meals for her loving husband. To some wise, this would be a drudgery but with so much love and joy abounding. Every day was like a honeymoon. <laughs> and then one day, something was added to this kitchen to complete their happiness. What was it, Orrin? A uh, can over? <laughs> a pot roast? No, a high chair. <laughs> and in that high chair was the darlingest little baby you ever did see. So, it just goes to show you from an ordinary boyfriend and girlfriend relationship, all this can be made possible. <laughs> Orin, where are you going? Uh, oh, uh, to get some fresh air. Orin, you come back here. Stop, up, Orin. Please, Bobby Joe. What's wrong with you anyway? Well, okay, look, I, I might as well level with you. I can't even think about getting married until I've had at least two more pay rates. I wasn't aiming that at you. I was... <laughs> I was... <laughs> two more pay raises, huh? That shouldn't take too long at all. <laughs> what be? <laughs> 
Petticoat Junction will return after these messages. Take me to Give it to you. Okay. Give me a G2. You fell in the Oh, Janet, may I talk to you for a minute? Oh, yes, of course. Well, it's just this. Everybody seems to be throwing me at Jerry. Especially Bobby Joe. I guess you've noticed that, huh? Well, it'd be a little hard not to. <laughs> well, I know they don't mean it, but well, I can imagine what Jerry must think. He probably thinks I've put them up to it and we're all ganging up on him. Well, then in that case, why don't you just come right out and tell them to stop? What's the matter? Well, what if what they're doing is working? <laughs> oh, you wouldn't mind that, eh? Well, no, not exactly. Well, then, why don't you just sit back and see what happens? What must be, must be. For what it's worth, I'm pulling for you, too. <laughs> Billy Joe, come on. We're all ready for you to do your new number. Okay. And thanks, Janet. Where did you hear? We got Betty Joe on the piano, Jerry on the guitar, and I'm on the bass guitar. It's quite a production. And you're getting to be quite a producer. <laughs> In this world of ordinary people, Extraordinary people I'm glad there is you In this world Of overrated pleasures Of underrated treasures I'm glad there is you I live to love, I love to live with you beside me, this road so new, I'll muddle through with you to go. work together as though you were meant for each other. You're just perfect together. <laughs> hey, how about another number? Do you know, Oh, Promise Me? Oh, now, come on, Bobby <laughs> Joe. Look, Jerry, I'm sorry. My sister means well. My whole family means well, but, well, you've been put on the spot ever since you've been here, and I, I want to apologize for all of us. Are you kidding? I think you're all just wonderful. Oh, I know, but still... No, look, so they're all for you. Is that a crime? In my book, that's the way a family should be. I just want to say that this is one of the nicest places I've ever been, and you're the nicest people I've ever met. Thank you, son. And, and tomorrow, you know what I'm going to do when I go back to the city? I'm going to tell Shirley. Shirley? Yeah, my fiancée. You know about Shirley. Oh, yeah, but I thought... Oh, sure, Shirley. Well, that's his fiancée. She's a very nice girl. <laughs> well, uh... I better be uh, getting back. It's getting late. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I have to check on the baby. Good night. Good night. Good night. Yeah, it is late. Good, Good night, night, everybody, and thanks for a wonderful time. I'm glad you enjoyed yourself. <laughs> Four of 
us go out and play tennis. Oh, thanks, but I really don't feel like it. Hey, I know. Why don't we go into Pixley? There's a swell picture playing at the Bijou. Romeo and Juliet. <laughs> <laughs> or better yet, we could go to the Rialto and Crab Bar Corners. They're playing a rerun. The Bride of Frankenstein. <laughs> Game of scrap. <laughs> Billy Joe. Oh, Billy Joe. I got a telegram for you. It's some real exciting news. <laughs> How did you know it's so exciting, nosy? Joe, it came over my telegraph. I had to know what's in a message. No, you don't. You should train yourself to take down messages without paying attention. <laughs> Joe, how did... No, brother. If it's too personal, don't feel obligated to have to read it to us. Okay, I won't. <laughs> Dear Billy Joe, I told Shirley about my wonderful weekend in Hooterville, and that took care of my ex fiance. Oh, 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 we'll hear the rest of it. I'm looking forward to seeing you again as soon as possible. Oh, that's oh, great. Hey. hey, how about next weekend? And you know what we could do when he gets here? We can. <laughs> 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 